you guys can hear me. Yeah, this uh, picture now that it's up there uh, looks really self-indulgent, so I'm glad you guys can look at this giant mug. Um, anyways, uh, yeah, flew in from San Francisco, and it's been awesome. Melbourne, you guys are so lucky, those of you that actually live here. Uh, this town's pretty cool. Uh, but anyways, as uh, Ben was mentioning, I'm Connor, uh, Connors. Um, you know, on the worldwide interwebs, you can find me at Connors everywhere, so GitHub, Twitter, wherever. That's sort of where I hang out. Uh, speaking of which, much like Ben said, I work at GitHub. Uh, that's what I do day to day. Uh, before I was at GitHub, I worked at a company called uh, Twitter, kind of like with uh, Nicholas. Uh, and basically, I'm a designer. That's sort of how I identify, um, even though Ben just said I was a hell of an engineer. I'm not at all. Uh, I don't know a thing about engineering. You guys are much smarter than me. Uh, I, I sort of identify myself as a designer. Maybe you do too, but uh, when I talk to people a lot, they, they mention, uh, oh, so what do you do day to day? Do you, you, you sketch and you uh, wireframe and you work in Photoshop, right? And I'm like, yeah, sort of. I also code a, a lot, and that's sort of where I spend most of my time, actually. So. The question comes up, well, then you're a developer. Uh, I'm like, cool, yeah, that's fine, whatever you want. Uh, it doesn't really matter to me. Um, the most important thing is you know, that I build rad stuff, or stuff that I think is rad, right? Uh, hopefully that's what you're doing. Uh, I, I expect that if you're building stuff on the web, that is what you're doing. So for the sake of science, I'm actually really interested. How many people here, by show of hands, would identify themselves as a, a designer? All right. Rock and roll. So there's actually a, a more than I expected. Uh, uh, what about developer? Yeah, all right. That makes more sense. That's cool, though, um, because at the end of the day, like I said, I write code. I'm sure if you're a designer and you're at CSS Conf, you're probably writing California style sheets, right? Um, <laughs> and we're all trying to build awesome stuff. Thank you very much. Um, the important thing is, uh, and the main point I want to make uh, about these titles, like they don't matter, right? If we're building things, if we're working on open source projects, uh, if we're working on products, uh, we're all making decisions about the thing that we're building, especially if you're writing the code. You're actually closer to it than a lot of uh, des traditional designers, maybe, uh, that don't get into the code. You're making the decisions that matter. And so if we're all writing HTML and CSS on a daily basis, uh, which I assume we are, uh, we should make better products decisions uh, when we're uh, doing that. So that's what my talk is. This is the, the title, I guess. Uh, so if you want to write that down, I don't know. Um, better product decisions with HTML and CSS. Uh, before we get too deep into that, I kind of want to take a trip down memory lane, I guess, at least for me, I don't know, uh, and sort of see where we came from, or at least I came from. Uh, I don't know about anybody else, uh, but uh, this is sort of where I got started on the web, a notepad, right? Uh, it was probably not Windows XP, but I, I think it's hilarious to look at, I don't know. Uh, it's probably Windows 98, whatever. Uh, but you know, I grabbed a book and uh, started writing these characters in this thing and then putting it in a browser and stuff happened. And that was really special, right? And luckily I stuck with it. Um, I love this example, like capitalize everything, screw indentions, nobody needs to do that. Um, and I, are they closing all, oh yeah, it's awesome. All right, this isn't actually my code, I just sort of found this on Google Images. Uh, but there was something really special about just how simple life was, right? You didn't know, I didn't know about design, I didn't know that's what I was gonna do. I thought that was, I don't know, decorating your home or something, I didn't know what design was. Um, but sooner or later, somebody told me and said, oh, what you're doing is design. I was like, okay, cool. Uh, and, and things got really complicated for design and for me. And I thought, all right, if I want to level up, I better learn this piece of software, right? Uh, Photoshop. A lot of people here use Photoshop and whatever. Yeah, cool. Me too, I guess, sometimes. Uh, less so than I used to. Um, but yeah, things got really complicated. And design became this thing uh, that there was felt like strict rules that if I wanted to be a real designer, uh, I had to learn. Uh, and then above Photoshop, there was like this whole process. Oh gosh, right? This is a lot of work and hey, that's cool. It's, it's there for a reason. 
Design is a process, and as I'm doing this uh, sketches and wireframes and, and working in Photoshop, this is actually a much simpler, I guess, uh, process uh, that I sort of simplified for the purposes of this talk. But there's much more nuance, I guess, in a, every project uh, that you do. But I realize that design is just a set of decisions. At every point when you're sketching, you're, you're trying to find answers to these questions about your product or your, uh, or your project. And every time you sort of move one level up to wireframes, you're, you're, all right, cool, now I've got a little bit more context. So I'm gonna make all those decisions again. And then I move into Photoshop and I get a little bit more context, I guess. And I have to make all those decisions again and design starts to feel really like, you're just doing the same thing. I, I'll be honest with you, as a parenthetical, the only reason this is in the slide is because I figured out that Keynote uh, supports GIFs now, so. Um, but I think it's applicable, right? Uh, this is what design felt like for a while, and that's cool. That's what I was doing. So looking back at this uh, and thinking about design as a set of decisions, and it doesn't matter if you're a, dev a developer or a designer, you're, you're making the same decisions. In fact, if you're a developer and that's what you're doing, working with production code, you're probably making the more important decisions uh, on a daily basis than a lot of design teams or designers. Uh, so, you know, I found myself sort of spending a lot more time here. Um, and that's cool for me. I really like it. I like code. It makes me feel like I'm, you know, I'm cool. I, I hang out with people like you and, and realize how stupid I am. And then, whatever, I go build stuff that I think is fun. Uh, so, you know, this is what I sort of live in on a daily basis now. It's come full circle for me. You know, it's a lot better than Notepad, don't get me wrong. This is actually Atom or whatever you prefer to use, but the point is that uh, life is a lot better now. It's simpler for me, right? I don't, I don't feel constrained by some design process that a lot of people, uh, sort of designers, I guess, uh, design culture sort of uh, works with. So before I go any farther though, I, I don't want you to misunderstand me. Uh, this is not a designing in the browser talk, like whatever, like do whatever works for you. In fact, uh, follow your heart. I, I didn't steal this from Nicole, but we think alike. Uh, I'm a big believer in this. Just follow your heart. If you feel like you're most effective doing other stuff, you know, I know des developers that work in Photoshop as well, just to work through ideas, like whatever. Use whatever you're needing uh, to get the job done. But the one takeaway I do want to make is that we need to realize that 94.3, this is very scientific, I made all these numbers up. All your decisions that you're making, they're gonna be overridden in code. Like as soon as you get into code and you're actually working with the real thing, like you realize that you spent a lot of time working and fretting about decisions with post-it notes if you're a designer, we love post-it notes. And uh, you're gonna rehash all those uh, decisions. And only this time you're gonna be closer to the real thing, right? So you're gonna be most informed. So I guess the main takeaway, if you, I could probably stop the talk right now and just, just get into code faster. That probably is preaching to the choir here, right? We're all coders. But if you're not uh, a full-time uh, developer and maybe you're, you do spend a lot of time sketching and wireframing in, in Photoshop, that's all good. But just sort of know that you're, you need to get into code faster. This is where we're gonna make the most impactful uh, decisions. So I mentioned I, I work, worked uh, at Twitter. Uh, it's pretty cool. I'm gonna tell you guys a little story uh, about new, new Twitter. Uh, do you guys remember this hashtag? We didn't name it that. Uh, we released sometime in 2011, I think, end of 2011, and right away, hashtag, new, new Twitter, cool. Um, but the story of new, new Twitter was sort of uh, really interesting uh, about summer, Coming up, maybe around this time, actually, more spring of 2011, a bunch of the designers, uh, the design team, was sort of brought into a room, and Jack Dorsey, the founder of Twitter, uh, one of the founders of Twitter, uh, he sort of set us down and said, guess what, guys? I'm gonna make my stamp on this product again, right? And he didn't say that, but that's what it was about. Um, cool, so we're gonna actually design Twitter again, or redesign Twitter, and you guys are gonna be able to work on this product, and man, I was excited. How often do you get to work on a product this big, uh, it kind of blew my mind at the time. Um, and we left that meeting and I was like, all right, let's do it. Uh, we have four weeks, by the way, is sort of the, the uh, timeline, which seems crazy at the time, but we did it. Uh, but four weeks and we need a screen, a Photoshop document for every screen in the entire product. 
I'm like, all right, well, we're going to hit the ground running. Luckily, my wife at the, oh, I guess my girlfriend at the time, she's now my wife, she was taking a trip to China for six weeks, so I was like, golden. I get to be deep into this stuff. Cool, so we hit the ground running. We had a bunch of rooms that looked like this, and this is cool. Like, I, I like looking back and seeing this. It was good times for me. Uh, but we, this is actually the mobile section. I left that part out. We actually did Twitter.com, but also all the mobile apps in four weeks, and we had a just like this, flows of every section of the site and, and a screen represented up on the wall, taped. It's a lot of work, and there's a lot of people. It wasn't just like four people. It was, it was like 10 people sort of working on this for four weeks straight. And at the end of it, we were going to build it, right? And that's when we were going to bring this nice little package to engineering. This always works out, doesn't it? <laughs> and we are going to be like, all right, let's build this. Hopefully you don't have any input. Uh, anyways, <laughs> big mistake, right? Uh, the cool part was, though, that we had a couple of awesome front-end guys that worked uh, on the design team. So Mark Otto made Bootstrap, and uh, my friend Dave and, and myself were sort of pulled aside again, and even a smaller group, and said, all right, guys, we're going to need to code this really quickly. Um, uh, and our manager was sort of very uh, adamant, I guess, and said, all right, you guys are going to code this. Uh, prototype it, we need to figure out if this stuff actually works when it's interaction, which is all good ideas. That's, that's great. We should have done it right away instead of four weeks later. But uh, the get you, or the catch, I don't know, the catch was um, don't worry about prototype code. You need to actually get this ready for production. Like, we don't have time for that. We're building this, and so guess what? You're, you're rebuilding Twitter.com from uh, all the HTML and CSS from the ground up from scratch, and now Nicholas gets to deal with it, so that's fun. And before too long, we, we, uh, we had something that worked out, right? This is uh, just a screenshot uh, of Twitter.com. As of, I don't know, a few months ago, they changed it again, but that's fine. Uh, iteration's good. Uh, yeah, and so we're coding this stuff, and we're working really closely with uh, the engineers on a day-to-day -day basis. And the way of working completely changed to something that was really tedious to, like, this aha moment where we're working with engineers to build something real, and all of a sudden we start seeing where all our designs just suck, right? Uh, this is actually what went live, but these modules on the sidebar, we had a ton of them on every page. Like, every page actually had different modules, but they were all doing the same thing. And you know, when those pictures are up on the wall and you're doing a design review, you, you don't necessarily catch that. I mean, sometimes you do with visuals. You can be like, well, these look slightly different. They could be the same. But it wasn't until we got in the code that it was really evident, because we're writing a ton of CSS to get all this stuff uh, to look the way it was. And we started realizing, oh yeah, we're, we're not just developers, we're designers. We sort of have a little bit of say into this, so let's fix it. And so we would go and consolidate components and, and try to make uh, reusable stuff or adaptable. Probably not, it was just reusable. We weren't that good. Uh, and we'd actually consolidate the code, simplify the code, and actually think about the design system that way, horizontally, and see, all right, well, I don't care about this one module, I care about this pattern that's gonna be used throughout the site. Uh, and so we would just make the change and be like, well, we know best because we're closest. And so people would come up and be like, uh, I've been meeting Ashka, I've been using the application, and uh, things seem to be moving around, do you know anything about that? And we would just jokingly sort of just say, yeah, we fixed the glitch. I don't know if you've seen Office Space. Good, this joke wasn't totally landing flat. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we just joke around. Yeah, we fixed it. Like, this is better, and here's the reasons why. Look how much code yours, your design was going to take, and now we've consolidated this stuff, and it just worked better. We didn't stop there. We, we shipped new, new Twitter and, and moved into more feature designs. So I worked on the profiles. This is an iteration of, uh, never shipped, but uh, this was all code, uh, which is funny, because I don't know if you guys saw, but I think Twitter just revamped uh, profiles again to be bigger uh, images, uh, which is cool. Uh, but we built these things uh, really quickly, right? And again, the, the flow was way better than just working in Photoshop and sort of sending over screenshots and saying, figure it out. Um, uh, the other thing we got to do is user testing, right? Uh, Photoshop documents, pictures, sketches, they, they don't test that great. You don't get that much of information. I mean, it's valuable, but there's something really cool about just saying, hey, play with this, right? 
And everything I've been talking about has been desktop, basically, but we didn't stop there. We, we have native apps, or we had native apps. Twitter still does have native apps. Um, and so how do we design these? So we're just like, well, I don't know Objective-C, but I sure do know how to build websites on mobile, so let's just start building this. So again, this is sort of a profile iteration. Uh, again, I don't think any part of this shipped. And there's something really powerful about pulling out a device and saying, all right, I work at a bigger company. There's meetings upon meetings and discussion upon discussion about minute details. There's something really cool about grabbing an executive, or in our case, uh, Dick, the CEO, and saying, hey, play with this. Can we just build it? And in, in five seconds, sort of seeing exactly what he wanted to see, understanding how it worked, and cutting through all the red tape and just saying, yeah, you know, who do I need to fire to get this done, you know? Uh, that's a direct quote. I don't know if he remembers it. We didn't get anybody fired, luckily. So anyways, I've been talking about this. This is sort of how we, we did it at Twitter. Uh, but why exactly is code better? I've sort of talked about this a little bit. Why is it better for making product decisions? Like, you know, we've been doing this for, you know, all of five years now, this whole web thing. It's been longer than that. But, uh, a lot of cool stuff has been built uh, in different ways. Well, I don't know. I think code's better because I'll give you five reasons. But first one, it elevates the conversation. I don't know how many of you uh, have been in designers and uh, sort of been pitching an idea and it immediately goes, well, what happens when I click this, right? Or, oh, that button looks a little too blue. Um, man, it's not the conversation I wanna have. I wanna have, does this, does this flow work for what we're trying to accomplish? Does it benefit our business? Does it, does it help the user do something they couldn't do? And those are the conversations that coded designs that are closer to the truth, those are the kind of conversations you're able to get out of that. Uh, secondly, let's use real data. This is actually probably the only one I shouldn't mention at all. Um, this is the most important. Um, Photoshop lies, right? Uh, you make up content, uh, you, you throw it in there so it looks good, and then you find out as soon as you start building it and putting real API data in there, you know, you've been fooling yourself for four weeks or whatever, or weeks or months in the worst case. Uh, real data just exposes all your poor decisions, and it's awesome, I love it. Immediately you figure out exactly uh, what you need to do uh, for reality. Move on. It also enforces systemic design. This is very similar uh, from a design perspective to what we just heard about from uh, the previous talk, right? Um, systemic design thinks about design across horizontally across a product, not about a feature and how something's like very minutely gonna work here. It thinks about how it's gonna work everywhere and how many different places do we need these same functions, right? And so you can think about that way uh, and using traditional design uh, methodologies, I guess, but code just brings it to the forefront really easily. I mean, if you're looking for it, I should say. So it helps you think about this stuff in a more modular uh, component-based uh, thinking. For it, it lets you speak the same language. Right, this is probably the biggest divide between uh, what we think of as designers, developers, like clashing, right? It's because everybody's talking differently. We're like, oh, well, this needs to be delightful. And they're like, yeah, it takes 5,000 lines. Like, at the same time, <laughs> this is really cool because, hey, you can make it delightful, but just don't talk about it. Like, it's like Fight Club, I guess. Just write the code, build it, and yeah, if it's awesome. In fact, the only result I've ever had out of this is a developer being like, oh, I can make that so much better for you, and it's gonna look cool, right? I love that. This whole idea is that the designer has to have all these uh, cool ideas, and they're the ones that get their way is, is BS. And then lastly, uh, it gets you closer to the truth. I've mentioned this a couple of times. It gets you closer to the real thing you're making. It doesn't matter how much uh, work we've done in the past and, and all these pictures. Uh, the truth of the matter is, uh, you know, it's not real. It's fake. It's what we think is going to happen. Code lets you see what's going to happen. And again, you're able to make better uh, decisions that way because you have more context. So the other thing I want to talk about, uh, going back to this design process, um, you know, we've been talking about the ways of making decisions, but the other sort of uh, artifact of this is that you generate a lot of throwaway work, right? Now, this sounds a little harsh. 
uh, I, like I said, I look back at the Photoshop documents all up on the wall, and that was good. That was fun. I was able to see a product develop uh, unlike I'd ever done before. But the truth of the matter, all those pictures, they're all in the trash, right? Maybe some of our cups are made out of them now. I don't know. Uh, but those sketches, they're gathering dust in some box if I grab them. The, the wireframes are on some design server someplace. No one's ever going to look at them. Hopefully they're deleted. Um, but yeah, you generate a lot of uh, throwaway work. So when we're building these things, how do we think about uh, how we're going to make it closer to the truth, how we're going to actually get it to production? So as a designer and the designers that I work with at GitHub, we, we think a lot about not wasting a bunch of work. I mean, it's okay if you do. If it's something really quickly, that's fine. But if you're working on something for a long time, let's make that transition to production easier. So the easiest way to do this, of course, is to write code that reflects your production architecture. So at Twitter, we got the, the awesome opportunity to be like, all right, let's throw everything out and define that architecture. If you have that option, that's cool. Uh, it's not for everybody. It probably shouldn't be done every time. In fact, it shouldn't. Um, but most people working in current environments and uh, current production builds of their product, they have a set way of, their do of, of writing CSS, of, of structuring your HTML. Write your code like that. In fact, if you can, don't do sort of a prototype that's off here, a siloed. Like, just cut a branch off of production if you can. That's how we do it at GitHub. In fact, Everything I've worked on at GitHub, I, I've just cut a branch. And right there, I have all the data that I need because the API is obviously hooked up. And we have a style guide with all our components already set up. So maybe if I'm working on GitHub's code base and I'm doing a prototype, I wouldn't write code like this. I'm showing you guys really fancy code, aren't I? So you got your button, right? And some people, I guess if you don't know how to structure your classes, sort of do the long form button and then the modifier class with a mini button. Don't do that, of course. We wouldn't do that. We're all pretty competent. But instead, just use the what's in production. This is our mini button that we use on GitHub. All right. Man, I taught you guys so much about classes. It's not even funny. <laughs> so what about native? Uh, we're, we're at a web conference. We're talking about CSS. Uh, probably didn't expect to talk about native. But again, earlier, we had native apps at Twitter, so we built those with HTML and CSS. Um, well, we do the same thing at GitHub. Uh, it's worth noting, you know, I don't know if you guys have used GitHub uh, probably in the command line, but we also have the desktop uh, Mac app. Now, this, this app is actually not released uh, yet. We're working on this, so you guys get a sneak preview. <laughs> Super exciting, right? Uh, it is actually really cool. So this screenshot is of uh, an app that Awesome, this guy's taking a picture. I'm gonna get in trouble. <laughs> uh, this screenshot is of your desktop app that we, uh, I can run it on my computer right now. The entire thing is built in HTML and CSS, and it's entirely set up with our API, uh, so we can actually build this. And our designers, I should give credit to uh, Steve Smith, uh, ordered list on Twitter. Uh, he's an awesome dude, and he built this whole thing, came up with a sort of a, a way and a methodology of working with it. So I'm about to just tell you all this cool stuff he did. Um, so HTML, CSS is cool, right? CSS, we can just switch the style sheet. And, but uh, we have Windows now, right? And literally, the, the application that we run on our desktop, we just have an option, just switch to Windows. So I can run this Windows app. And this allows us to develop two, uh, two sets of products uh, that we ship to you know, users or sell, or we will be selling. Uh, and just really quickly have working prototypes. Now, we don't ship HTML and CSS native apps. Like, let's get that clear. Um, we actually have uh, native developers that, that build this stuff in Objective-C or whatever. Um, so going back to my last point, doesn't that generate a lot of throwaway work? Kind of back to square one, right? I'm throwing away, this time, not pictures. I'm throwing away a bunch of code, because you're not going to ship CSS and HTML. Well. Not exactly. Uh, we kind of came up with a system that we like to use um, because assets work a lot differently on native than they do on the web sometimes. So we develop all this stuff and get native-ready assets that we can actually ship directly into our Objective-C. And what this means is that I get to show you a lot of hilarious CSS that uh, puts us back about 10 years. Uh, you guys heard about this? I don't know if you have. Background image, right? 
Super cool. Yeah, if you're doing an, uh, you know, an icon or something, like OS 10, Mac, desktop, and, and iOS, uh, just you know, use a background image, right? Because you're gonna use that asset and ship it with your, uh, your application. So your code looks really fancy. Background image, just use the, the ping. It works out well. Uh, so that's a really simple example, but buttons and things like that that are flexible on native, I don't, I don't know how familiar people are. I'm not that familiar with it. But assets a lot of times look something more like this. This is a button asset. Um, and then what they do is they slice it, right? And it, and it sort of cat, has these uh, bookends, uh, these 10 pixel side uh, bookends that stretch uh, the green area and sort of stretch this button uh, across uh, to fit your text. Uh, background image really doesn't really serve our purposes for this. So uh, what do we do? W luckily we have something cool called border image. And so we build our, our buttons with border image. Again, this is not something you would ship all the time with your HTML and CSS uh, normal products. But we can use something like this, right? Um, border image, put our asset in there, and actually sp uh, specify our slice points. In this case, it's zero on the top and bottom and 10 on the sides. Um, I'm gonna look at that right there. It's really, really good stuff. And, and then we get something that looks really uh, good on native. This is an actual screenshot of what it ends up looking like. And we're, again, what that means is that we have images that we can actually just right away use. Now, Nicole actually pointed out like, hey, maybe you guys are screwing up. And maybe we are. Um, uh, maybe there's better ways of doing this, but this is what we use right now. It's, it's, it's worked out pretty well and makes a really good working environment for what otherwise uh, wouldn't involve the web at all. Uh, so what about Retina? Uh, again, we have something really cool. WebKit image set, right? Uh, vendor prefixes aren't the best, but who cares, because this, this is going to be thrown out, right? Uh, we can actually use this and set up uh, multiple assets for, uh, for Retina versus 1x versus 2x. And again, we can structure our asset names just to match exactly what's gonna be used by the native machine. In this case, at 2x works for iPhone and, and Mac uh, desktop. Uh, that's how they sort of look at the code and see what asset to pull in for your screen. So all this is really cool. Uh, I think it is, at least. Hopefully you do. Um, so helpful tools, right? So, I want to make this easier. When, when I'm doing something uh, design-wise or code-wise and building out uh, this stuff over and over again, uh, you know, at Twitter we decided, hey, well, internally we've sort of got all these components and this thing set up to uh, build iPhone apps, and very specific to Twitter, unfortunately. We should be able to abstract this and actually build like a framework or a UI toolkit. Um, so that's what we did. So I made this, uh, this thing along with two of my friends, um, Jacob and Dave. Uh, you can check it out at Go Ratchet. But basically it's just, we were doing mobile applications in HTML, CSS over and over again. And we were making prototypes, mind you. So when we built this originally, we thought that was the main use case. But you know, I think over time we'll see that this could actually be a cool toolkit for just making mobile web apps. And again, this is a UI toolkit, so it's, it's HTML, it's CSS, and JS components that you're able to use. Uh, when Nicholas was mentioning that other toolkits are thinking about taking a more suit approach to it, uh, we're definitely uh, really thinking about this. Uh, Ratchet is actually part of the Bootstrap org as well, so if you want to check it out on uh, GitHub, it's just github.com slash TWBS slash Ratchet. Um, and yeah, we've started building cool stuff. So this is an example from our docs of just a simple app, you know, movie finding app, that again, this allows us to build things that we can just hand to people and say, can't we just do this? And it answers so many questions. It's amazing how much BS gets thrown out the window as soon as you have something tangible. And that's sort of what the purposes of this is. Um, so this is kind of meant to be agnostic to platform. It's, it's pretty close to iOS. Uh, we also added sort of themes that we're able to build on top of this. So if you want an iPhone app, like here you go, like here's an iPhone theme that makes it look like iOS 7. Uh, so if you really wanna make a mail app, you can. <laughs> uh, it comes with the icons that you're able to use, things like that. Uh, but enough, you know, pimping my own stuff. Um, another tool that I really like from Facebook as well, I don't know if any of the guys here have worked on Framer, but that's cool. 
um, sort of the Sofa Labs guys that were acquired by Facebook sort of worked on this. And after we originally launched Ratchet, uh, I got an email from uh, one of the design directors at uh, Facebook saying, hey, we've been thinking about the same things. We're building all our apps in HTML and CSS, like in prototyping tools. And obviously, they shipped it with uh, web technologies, too, and then went back, I guess. Um, but they're thinking about ways of like prototyping interactions and everything. And I know I'm showing a JS tool, uh, but whatever. We all, we all blend. Uh, Framer's really cool, though. You're able to use this JavaScript um, library and actually just tie up to elements on the page. They integrate directly with Photoshop if you still want to do that. But you can also use uh, actual web uh, technology behind it and animate those, too. So check that out at Framer.js, because that's something really cool. Um, so what's next? What is next? I don't know. I'm really excited about uh, the opportunity to build desktop mobile or desktop apps. Um, and there's really no helpful tools for that. So if you guys want to build it, if somebody in here is like, oh yeah, that's cool, please do. It'd be really cool, because I, I can't spend any more time on open source than I already do. My wife will leave me. I already spend way too much time, and it sucks the, you know, my soul out. Not really, I love open source, it's great. But I don't have time for another big project. I'll probably end up building it, whatever. But it'd be really cool to sort of abstract these, these, these things out and find better ways of doing it so that other people can, uh, like us in this room, that maybe we don't work on native apps at all. All of a sudden, we can use the techniques that we learned today that are going to be freaking amazing and actually make cooler stuff that otherwise we wouldn't try to uh, get involved with. Uh, and I think that's really exciting. Uh, so I have no idea how I'm doing on time, so I'm just going to wrap up. Oh, I can? Well, I just quit. All right, um, yeah, I just quit. I got nothing. I'm, uh, I'm done. <laughs> Thank you.